Memorial Weekend at Skagit Speedway continues with the second night, race number eight of Skagit's 1991 racing schedule. We're talking with the 360 feature winner last night, Dennis Army. Dennis, three in a row, you moved up to second in points, and you know, you got to look back on the first couple of weeks, things didn't go that well, you might be the point leader. Yeah, we had a few things, you know, little problems and stuff, but it's finally starting to come together now for us. What has turned it around for you? What exactly, what's the change from Dennis Army uh, week number one to week number seven? Keeping the car together. We just had some little piddly problems, and we finally got them straightened up, and the car's staying together. And, and I think I'm driving a little bit better than I have in the past. Mm -hmm. Is that just maturity as the years go on? You just learn year after year? Well, a good work in race car helps a whole bunch. Well, the track last night seemed extremely fast. It was. It was real fast. I, I enjoyed it. I mean, it was a little bit dusty, but I, it's a good, fast racetrack. Smooth, a lot of cushion. It was a good racetrack. I remember one restart, uh, it was a yellow flag, so you made a nice move, I think, in one and two and got up to second or third right off the bat, and then they had to restart and you had to go back. Uh, I would think you get a little frustrated when you make a nice move and gain some positions and have to do it all over again, because it seemed like on the restart you didn't do it. Yeah, I thought the same thing. I mean, God, I, thought I went right into second. And I, well, I'll have to go back and try it again. And it just, matter of fact, after that red, we did about the same move mm -hmm. and took the lead. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, I don't know if your dad's ever won three races in a row before, but it's got to feel pretty good right now. Oh, it feels great. I'd just like to win another one. All right, Dennis, maybe we'll be talking to you tonight. Dennis Army trying to make it four in a row here at the Skagit Speedway. We're talking with last night's sprint car feature winner, Bob Burrow. Bob, uh, last night's victory, I don't know if you realize, number 24 of your racing career here at Skagit. Uh, hard to believe you've had that many when you think about it, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of hard to believe that many. It's just We just plug along, try to win races. Got real good J&J &J sprint cars, and... Every spent car main event's won by a J&J, &J, so that's got to tell you something. We're on the right track there. Track very fast last night. You looked real good. Yeah, this is a, a different style of car. First time we've ran this car, and it worked really good. What about uh, any worries last night uh, in traffic? Things went fairly good for you the entire distance. Yeah, everything. The car worked high, low, everywhere I wanted to drive. The car worked excellent. Mm -hmm. Couldn't get the daily double last night. I guess you can't do that every week. No, there's a little miscommunication on the lights, I feel, and I think we got screwed, you know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Well, maybe tonight you can come through and pull out a victory. Uh, it's been a great season for you so far, and hopefully it continues the rest of the year. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Bob Brill trying to make another win tonight in the sprint card. Coming up, we're going to talk with a former track champion here, many-time champion, Butch Gilbert. And Butch, always a fun gentleman to interview. And if you've ever heard any Butch Gilbert interviews over the years, he's got one line that he always says, and it's, this is true. So we're going to walk over to Butch Gilbert right now and do an interview with him. And the challenge for me is to keep talking to Butch. The interview will keep going as long as it takes to get him to say, this is true. A special JDS exclusive here on videotape. Coming, We're talking with a former sprint champion here at the Skagit Speedway, Butch Gilbert. I was watching Indy today, Butch, and thinking about all the veterans in racing as hey, we watched AJ Ford. I thought a little about Butch Gilbert. You've been around here a few years. Yeah, quite a few. I think something like 29, maybe. I'm, but who keeps track? Huh? <laughs> what keeps Butch Gilbert going in this racing game? Well, after last week, I sometimes wonder, but uh, I don't know. I just enjoy racing, being here, you know. Uh, I live close enough that if I wasn't here, I'd hear it. So, and of course, Jan works up above, so I just enjoy racing, you know. You had the big crash, I don't know, last year, the year before, when you got upside down at the front, uh, stretching a lot of fans thought, well, maybe Butch will retire after that. Yeah, well, not quite smart enough, I guess. I don't know. Uh, no, uh, I, like I say, I just enjoy it. Last night, the car running super. Uh, you had the lead for a while. Uh, Bob got by you late, but uh, you really had to be pleased that you got the car together after almost destroying it the week before. Uh, yeah, we are. Uh, I am. You know, myself and the pit crew. We worked midnight uh, all last week and almost destroying it. It was destroyed. Uh, the only thing that was left out of the other was the radiator, the motor, uh, the bladder, and the seat, and of course the Nerf bars. And that was, we started all over, basically. I understood when the Sabre crews got over to you, you were pretty upset. Yeah, I was. I, uh, I destroyed my toy, and when my toy gets destroyed, you know, I go bananas. <laughs> Competition in this division, very, very tough. You've got uh, the veterans like yourself and Jerry Edson having good years, and of course you got the young guys like the Bob Burroughs and uh, uh, this uh, Bill Winsley coming along. Uh, you got some top drivers to deal with. Yeah, this is true, but this is this is what the racing's about. This is good. I've 
glad to see that there, there's not one car dominating the whole thing or, you know, two cars. It's uh, anywhere from one to eight or ten. Mm -hmm. Butch, uh, any goals you have left in this game you haven't done yet? No, just come up on Saturday night, race my races, and go home and take it easy. <laughs> and keep the car in one piece. How are things at UPS? Uh, it's, it's booming, growing, and still there. Uh, hopefully another seven years is all I have to worry about. Mm -hmm. Is that something we should all have stock in, the UPS company? Well, I wish I did, but we can't. It's just a management type deal, so. And I never wanted to go into management. <laughs> Someday we expect to see you have a brown car with their colors, but uh, just no way, huh? No, no way. They, 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 you ask them about that, and they say that they sponsor you every week with a paycheck. So, <laughs> so I let it go at that. What does the dirt cut mean to Butch Gilbert? Oh, uh, being able to run against uh, a few other drivers, a lot of other, you know, different drivers and stuff, and look around, see the cars, and enjoy it. And just, you know, a three-day week, a week off from work. <laughs> but it's always a pleasure watching you race. All the best of luck the rest of the year. Hope to see you here for many years to come. Okay, I thank you. Thank you. See you later. Butch Gilbert, Sprint 04 here at the Skagit Speed. We're looking at the number 11 late model, John Huggins of Bellingham, who won the feature last night. John is out uh, busy right now. We will get a, an interview with John before this season is over, though. His first ever feature win here at the Dirt Track Capital. It is a Sunday night, Memorial Day weekend here at the Skagit Speedway. For the first time uh, in the decades, the track has scheduled two races back to back, a Memorial Weekend, and they're going to accomplish getting both shows in. Another big points race tonight is all four divisions in action here on JDS Video. We hope you sit back and enjoy. We hope you enjoyed the interview with Butch Gilbert. He made me work to get out the key phrase, the uh, Groucho Marx uh, phrase of the day, but he finally said this is true. And we're not making fun of Butch. He's a true gentleman. I'm sure he'll get a kick out of uh, watching this tape. And anytime you interview Butch, he gives you a great interview, and this is true. Sit back and enjoy tonight's action here at Skagit Speedway, Memorial Day Sunday at the Dirt Track Cap.
right now. Six car, a veteran driver who's looking for it all. Let's hear it.
right here. And Tanglement with a couple of these Econo cars, but everybody is okay. Had a couple of flips already here tonight as well. We'll uh, update you on those here in just a couple of minutes. John Youngquist uh, getting upside down, as did Greg Brown. Both drivers are okay. And that's where we stand right now for the Economy Modifies in their uh, first and uh, only heat race of the evening here tonight at the Skagit Speedway. Ken Eliason is leading the early going here, lap number three of this Economy Modified race. And we've got Brandon Skeeters getting a little sideways, and we've got a problem with Ken Eliason, who, and Donnie Webb over there, they got together, and uh, they've tangled into the fence now, Donnie Webb out of the car, so very early action here, a little uh, bending the sheet metal run for the Economy Modifieds here tonight. Finally get a good feel of the cars, and they're tearing them up pretty good. We've had a good field of cars the uh, last night. We have 57 Jerry Bundy and we have Ricky Faber in the 3C. 360, heat race number one. Things off to a quick start here tonight, and it will be. Uh, Jay Barnes is one of the few, and he's running a modified body. In fact, he was out there earlier. I thought it may be his uh, new economy modified, but he's out there running with the uh, 360s here this evening. And the early leader after one lap will be Vangerbert in the 82, Boyd in second, Valiant in third, and Ricky Faber in fourth. Early going here. Sun's still a little shining brightly. Blue sky. We don't have the clouds. And here last night, beautiful night for racing. And here uh, distance of the racetrack coming down here and join us. We're just underway with our heat tonight. Lots of racing left to go. Another good field of cars here tonight at the first round right down. Lap number three in this first heat race for the 360. The Vangerberg's got a good lead. Darcy Valiant makes contact with the fence. He's upside down in turn number two. Rick Bobber and Darcy Valiant make contact and Valiant upside down just outside of turn number two. Kind of got squeezed up against the fence and he's uh, tipped over wrong. One of those uh, bump wheels type accidents that you see so often in sprint car racing. Well, the back home in Indiana, here is the Paris. Right, really, really exactly. Out of turn four, three flag. Three laps in a first heat for the 360s. And Mr. Vangover will take the lead down the back chute, and the yellow is out. Not a very good start there. We thought maybe they would let it go, but uh, they did not repeat. Probably misses uh, being out there. Competition has heated up a bit. Out of turn four, three flag. Bundy. Boy, Bundy and Boyd keep very close to making contact there. Down the back chute they go. Still a little hard to see here. The lights are not on yet. Uh, they're just coming on. The sun is shining brightly. And looking through a little dirty window here at our media center. Bangerberg with the lead down the back chute. Bundy gets second. Here comes Boyd upstairs in turn number three. Jerry Bundy, Leo Boyd, wing to wing out of turn number four. And Bundy will take over second spot. The brightly painted number 57 of Jerry Bundy, the pink roll cage. Bright blue numbers, Bundy in second, but he trails Vangerbert. Leo Boyd in third, he's under heavy pressure right now from Rick Faber. Running a last uh, is Jay Barnes' 99 car, and he's battling with uh, 33 Billy Ray Johnson, who was hoping to make the show again tonight. Barnes is going down the 99 car, white line, one lap to go. Barnes will nurse that car to the pit area turn number three and out of turn number four will be Dale Vangerman with the victory. Jerry Bundy car 57 second, 3C Ricky Farmer, 34 Leo Boyd, 33 Billy Ray Johnson. Well this will be the night that Billy Ray just here fairly early in the year for a one night shot. All right, out of turn four, very bad start. I'm sure he's gonna call that one back. They were all everywhere and the yellow is out. So everybody extra anxious out there tonight. It's not far out. The track lights are coming on. Out of turn four, that's a better start. Green flag, and Beaver will take their lead. A scramble for second, third, and fourth. Wes Gibbs, Army, Raper, and Skromsky. Jerry Paul at the back. Raper gets sideways in contact with Army. Francis Stromsky smacks the inside pit fence, and he's got some front end damage, and we have to go yellow. Well, just barely, Ron, uh, Francis Stromsky had to hit the binders, and usually from April, especially early April this year. Out of turn four, green flag. Still 
complete restart on this uh, second heat race for the 360s. Dennis Army on the inside, got by Gibbs, but Beavert holds on. A good battle for the number one spot. Beavert comes out of turn number four, locks it up good. Three abreast down to four. Dennis Army's got the inside line as they go into one. One lap in the books, and Dennis Army will take the lead. Beavert comes back on the inside. Down the back chute, they go into turn number three. Beavert regains the lead, slides into Army, has to back off. Gibbs goes into second, and it's Army with the lead. Yeah, last night a driver maybe wouldn't have backed off in that position. We saw a lot of uh, bumping uh, open wheel machines last night, but uh, good move by uh, some rookies and some veterans out there. Dennis Army, West Kip, Dallas Raper goes into third. Attrition rate very high tonight, and this will eliminate his semi main events. Uh, last night we had semis in all divisions, and at least in the open wheel ranks. Going through the machinery pretty quick tonight, and the dust comes off the oval. They're halfway through as the sun finally goes behind a cloud there in the west. The traffic lights are on here at Skagit Speedway tonight, and Dennis Army leading his heat race. Things just going super for the Army machine. Lloyd Army pretty happy about things, of course, uh, like he should be. Uh, father cheering his son on. Alan Raper closing up the gap now on Wes Gibbs as Dennis Army comes up on Jerry Paul. Paul goes to the infield, gets out of the way. And will not be a problem there with rookie driver Jerry Paul in the 7S. Dennis Army has uh, this race pretty much in the bag unless something mechanical will go wrong as he takes the white flag from Richard Walker at the gate. West Gibbs, Alan Raper, Bill Beavers cross the line to take the white. And this is all Dennis Army. And to turn number three under turn number four. Dennis Army continues to roll here at Skagit Speedway. 11, West Gibbs is second. 13, Alan Raper third. 16, Billy Beaver. And 7S, Jerry Paul. And we'll check in more with Dennis Army in just a moment. We are set to go for this next heat race under turn number four. Green flag. Are they going to call that one back? Uh, let's see. No, they're going to let it go. Okay, Jeff Fletcher's got the early lead with the Joe Hancock running second. Rod Perkins, Ron Elias, and Bob Burrow. Here comes Perkins. He takes the lead on turn number four. And Don Spoon running in last position, the Miller beer number 12, in the Miller black and gold colors. Perkins shoots out to the lead, and he's building quite a lead right now. Jeff Fletcher trailing in the 36 machine. Elias and Burrow, Hancock, and Spoon. And uh, Ron Perkins, uh, Ron looks very impressive right now, just kind of running away with this one. Yeah, he's really, really, really strong. We haven't seen a lot of Really uh, competitive action out of Rod this year. Last year, he really sent a message to this group that he was a car director, but this year he's had some tough luck. Well, he's leading the show right now to the delight of all his fans here tonight. Bob Burrow coming up now on Jeff Fletcher. And Burrow will uh, take second spot now on lap number four. So it's Burrow running second, but I don't think he'll catch uh, Mr. Perkins here with uh, four laps to go now. Three as they cross the start finish line. Ron Perkins, Bob Burrow, Jeff Fletcher, Ron Eliason, Donnie Spoon, and Joe Hancock. And that's the way they stand here. They'll be looking just a few laps to go as Perkins again comes out of turn number four. Looking real good. A very, very quick track. Dry and dusty out there, but not a bump in it. Uh, cars doing very, very quick speeds here on the high bank play oval. Into number three, out of turn number four. One lap to go for Rod Perkins. One lap to go. Perkins, Burrow, Fletcher. Fletcher now is in a battle with Ron Eliason for third spot. Eliason gets him in turn number two, and he's going to take it. Out of four, Rod Perkins. Hold the pole, a nice win for Rod Perkins. Bob Burrow, the one car second. Ron Eliason gets by Fletcher for third in the 06. That's Fletcher, the 36. Donnie Spoon, the 12. And Joe Hancock, car number 98. Rod Perkins with the victory. Wander Dirt Cup. And if you want to check those out, they're here at the track. It looks like a pretty good investment. Out of turn four, green flag. We've got uh, uh, Joe Lyon running actually a sprint car table. It's one of the first times this year. Rory Price, Eddie Evans, Sean Becker, Shauna Wilski, and Darren Smith. Added turn number four, lap one in the books. Eddie Evans will take the early lead in the 96 machine. Eddie Evans, whoop, we got a tangle. Uh, Sean Becker and Rory Price, especially in August for Knoxville. Added turn four, three flag. This is actually heat four, isn't it, for uh, this group? A lot of cars again, this division. Rory Price gets a little squirrely. In fact, drops way off the pace. I think he might have a flat, well, I'm just checking a flat tire the way he 
kind of lost momentum there, but it uh, looks like all of his tires are all right. But he's got a problem, and your leader is Eddie Evans all by himself. Sean Wilski running second. Joe Lyon in third, and in fourth, Darren Smith out of Republic in the bright pink number 81. And uh, Eddie Evans is really having no troubles as Rory Price brings the 39 mound to the pit area. So a tough break for Rory Price. And again, with uh, a no finish here, will not get any passing points if he's able to run the main event tonight. That's good news for other drivers in that race for the 360 title, especially folks like Jerry Bundy, Dennis Army, and Bob Burrow. Over halfway through now, and this is a fairly easy win here if Eddie Evans can keep the uh, 96 machine uh, running in the right direction. Sounds real smooth out there tonight. Eddie Evans kind of a 96 down the back straight away. You'll be looking at a white as he comes around and comes up on Darren Smith. Uh, and that's always exciting. And he gets a white flag, goes underneath of Darren Smith down the front chute. Sean wilson has got a solid second. Lying up above. Uh, found a little hole there, which I hadn't seen before. And Eddie Evans will take the win. Cut number 96, Eddie Evans, the Brick Red 96 machine with 56. Sean Wilski running the number two position. And in the show spot tonight, car 54, Mr. Lyon. He's got a Decker, Huggins, Hurlbert, and Bishop. Out of four, green flag. See Mr. Huggins can build on last night's uh, win. One thing about when you have back-to-back -back races, Ron, you don't have a whole week to think about it. You can come right back and uh, put it together. I suppose that's good, too, if you've had a problem the night before. You don't have to worry about it a whole week. You can put the car back together and come back in 24 hours. John Huggins has the lead after lap number one, after negotiating around John Anderson. Mike Hilbert will uh, follow suit now as he goes into second out of uh, turn number two down the back straightaway. Those uh, bright blue tarps again hanging from both uh, turns three and four and one and two and they came in handy last night but it's uh, fairly light uh, all night last night kennedy will or pardon me hurlbert will take the lead down the back shoe jim crable brings a 65 seat to the pit area so jim crable is out of it and hurlbert with the lead mike hurlbert john huggins in second john anderson third chuck decker in fourth and Huggins will spin in turn number one and a half. And his future in racing, it may be here for a while if the sponsors have their way. Well, Walker waves the green and it looks like reluctantly. He kind of shook his head like he didn't like the situation, but uh, the green is staying out, so that's where they're going to be. <laughs> Your leader is Mike Hilbert, John Huggins second, John Anderson third, Bishop in fourth. Right now, uh, last night he really drove an excellent race in his first uh, first main event victory. But tonight the car seems to be pushing a little bit, and he's having trouble with it. Well, things seem to be extremely moist, uh, heavy out there with all the rain the last uh, few days. And tonight, of course, a little dry slick. Could he still be set up for last night? Or it's possible that he left his uh, main event set up set up hand and thinking that the track uh, would uh, dry quicker than it is. Yeah, it's all Mike Gilbert right now. John Huggins second. The heats have. Uh, Fairly been uh, uneventful here tonight. Everybody's been spaced out pretty good. Uh, Bishop spins to the infield on the pit exit uh, entrance way in turn number two. And he's blocking the way. They're going to keep this race going. White flag, one lap to go. Walker just shrug shrugs his shoulders. <laughs> he wants to get home tonight. Something's on TV, I guess, at 11. He's got to get home. Into turn number three. Out of turn number four, it'll be Mike Hilbert picking up the victory. Second spot, John Huggins. Third spot will be Johnny Anderson, and he will not finish, but fourth next to him, Scott Cole Glazer in the 17, Smith the 28, Dietz the number four. Out of turn number three, green flag. Very, very, everybody's sleeping out there. And even the slow lap, uh, Walker was telling him to speed up just before he gave him the, uh, you know, the uh, green a lap before. Tell him, let's, you know, speed, go a little quicker. But uh, Randall laboring out there falls to last spot on the first lap, and Rick Smith will take the lead. Weatherby, Cole Glazer, Deeds, and Randall. So Bruce Weatherby, number two, chasing Smith around the track. Cole Glazer, the 17, and Dietz, a good battle for third. Dietz goes upstairs. Smith gets sideways out of four, almost loses it. Weatherby punches it a little bit now and closes the gap quickly. 
Bo Blazer holds on to third. Dietz goes upstairs on the orange number four. And uh, it's kind of gingerly action out there tonight. Like everyone's running glass cars. Nobody wants to get scraped. Smith, Weatherby, Bo Blazer, and Dietz. Your top four. Randall is at last now. Smoke pouring out of the seven machine. And let's see if he takes it to the infield. He's going to put some smoke and let's see if they, they're going to keep this thing going here. And they'll just point the number seven in around. It's a little field, I guess. They figure everybody can see him as he'll pull in the pit area now here halfway through. Dietz goes into second now. Cole Glazer goes by Weatherby into third. And that drops the number two white and blue machine down to last position. Randall has put some liquid very, very low on the racetrack. It is out of the groove, so it should be a problem. You see it now down the front straightaway, so something is blowing on the red Randall machine. Now, this has been typical of all the heat races tonight. The cars have got spread out quickly and not a lot of action in these heat races here this evening. That will happen on occasion. Rick Smith will look at a uh, white, that is. He comes out of turn number four. One lap to go for Smith in the 28 car. Dietz, a solid second. Scotty Coldblazer in third in the 17, and Weatherby the two. Into number three, and out of turn number four, and that's the way they will finish with Rick Smith with the victory. Count number 28. Four car, Jimmy Dietz in second. 17, Scott Coldblazer in third in the two car. Mr. Weatherby will finish in the I mean, he's not here, but so many people, it's hard to get around to see everybody. Out of turn four, green flag. Steve Whitty, Grant Robbins, Ken Flamang, Dick Whitty, and Ken M. Third. Your lineup here for this final heat race for the late models tonight. A couple of yellow machines leading the way here as they go into three out of turn number four. Grant Robbins of Concrete, Ferndale's Ken Flamang, and Flamang will take the lead down the front chute as they go into turn number one to start lap two. Tim Levine not here tonight. We see Tim uh, wandering around the pit area, but he is without a racing machine here tonight. Grant Robbins slowed down, contact from Woody. Well, from this view, Woody should have had plenty of time to uh, hit the binders on the dash here tonight. First, let's we'll get this seat. Late model race in the books, and Ken Flamang will take the lead on the green flag. Only one lap in the books here, so seven to go. It looks like it'll be a Flamang uh, Dick Whitty race here if they keep the cars in the forward motion here at the dirt track capital. Kenny Flamang, Whitty, and Ken in third. If you joined us late, of course, uh, you heard earlier from Scott Berg, uh, track announcer Dave Hale was talking with Scott. Scott Berg uh, at the track for the first time since his uh, near fatal accident here, and that's not uh, stretching the imagination whatsoever. I'm sure he was happy to see that reinforced flag gate down there. I don't think he knows whether he's going to flag again or not. Uh, I'm sure this year he wouldn't, no matter what happens. He needs a whole year to let us get his body back into moving condition. Ken Flying kind of waltzing away at this one right now. Four laps down. Beautiful Saturday night for racing. A few clouds up there. The sun has gone down. A rosy sky as we look over to the west, right across the track here. The breeze has died down a bit. The flag's fairly limp here tonight at Skagit on this Sunday night, Memorial Day weekend, 1991. Of course, all the action here live on KBFW all season long. We'll be with you. Ken Flamang, Dick Whitty, the top two with third, only about a half lap behind now. Trophy Dash is coming up straight ahead, and after we conclude our dashes, we'll talk with the winners. We'll take it on track side and hit Mike Mann, Dave Hale. We'll chat with the winners here this evening. It should be interesting. Could be a Denny Smith, Butch Gilbert, or Mark Ellis victory. We'll let you know here in just a couple of minutes. White flag will have to go for Ken Flamang. The victory is imminent for the Ferndale veteran. Makes his living out in Talco and Ferndale. Celebrated their 25th anniversary in Watkins County. Kenny Flamang gets the victory. Witty in second. And in third in third. Kind of 78. Still a half lap behind. He's going to uh, finish the race, though. Ken Imthern inside the pole position. Butch Gilbert next to him. And Denny Smith 
in the second row. Traffic lights are out. Three cars, three laps, sprint dash, green flag. A good start for Mark Ellis. Let's see if he can hold on. Gilbert tries to come through on the inside. Gilbert takes the lead. Butch Gilbert takes the lead down the back straightaway. Mark Ellis second, Denny Smith third. Gilbert, a high turn number four. And he's got it in control. He'll look at it wide in one lap. It goes very quick. I thought maybe Mark Ellis, when he got that quick jump, might just gloss away from it, but uh, Butch Gilbert was right there, answered the call. Gilbert gave him plenty of room on that start. White flag, one lap to go, and Butch Gilbert will be in the winner's circle. Gilbert, Ellis, and Smith, very, very quick three laps here at Skagit. Gilbert's car, victorious, Trophy Dash, Butch Gilbert in the 04, Mark Ellis in second, and Denny Smith in third. Let's up the pace here. Car number 96, 360 dash, green flag. Kevin's bicycle down the front straightaway. He was up on two wheels, and Perkins will take the lead down the back straightaway. Rod Perkins upstairs on Evans. Evans then have all four wheels coming out of four, and that uh, really cost him. Dennis Army goes into second. I don't think you'll have the time to catch Rod Perkins right now. As we said before, this race goes very quickly, only four laps. Rod Perkins building up a nice lead. Dennis Army, Eddie Evans, and Bangamert. They'll get a white on the next circuit. Two laps to go, and this is all Rod Perkins. Perkins is going to win this one unless something mechanical will go wrong. Perkins will have himself a victory. Ron Perkins takes the white one lap to go. And Ronnie, when you take it back to the lap one, Eddie Evans, uh, that bad start really kind of cost him. Ron Perkins waves his hand in victory here tonight at the Skagit Speedway, winning the 360 Trophy Dash. Dennis Army will be second. I want to talk too much about the time because if we do, we'll give it the big hex and we'll be running to a roadblock. So, <laughs> turn four, green flag. Good observations by Perkins about the track, too. Ken Flamang will take the early lead down the back straightaway. Smith gets sideways into the infield. Will he get back on the track? He's sliding through the wet infield. He gets back on the track again. We got a two car battle for the number one spot, and Earl Bird will take the lead. You could just see Ken Flamang just get a little squirrely out there, and that could really be, as Rod Perkins just told us, very slick in spots. And Ken Flamang just bobbled just for a split second, and uh, when you got someone the veteran of Hurlburt, that was all he needed, Ron. Just one little microscopic error really cost him this race. So again, and, uh, and, uh, so see the guys working there, you have to go through, uh, so just see that uh, slick spot uh, right in the middle of the track. And Hurlburt takes the victory at con number one, 15, Ken Flamang second, 28, Rick Smith, Don Spoon. Joe Hancock, Rory Price out there, Francis Stromsky, and Sean Becker. So some very quality material in this one right now, and only a couple of cars will move on. So we'll watch the number one and two spots. I'm sure Rory Price, who leads right now, uh, wants to get in that feature race here tonight. Very rarely has to come from the semi-main, but he's going to do it right now, and he's leading. Don Spoon running second. Very attractive race car in the Miller Beer colors that we mentioned earlier. In third spot, Joe Hancock. Fourth, Billy Ray Johnson. So again, Billy Ray, week number eight. He's not going to make the program here tonight. It is Rory Price waltzing away with this one. One lap per car. So it'll go by very quickly with the seven cars we have here. Taking some exciting laps out there. Sean Becker really laboring way back in the pack. Uh, Ron, he's going to need a miracle to uh, make the program. Sean's car is not working at all. He's kneeling over on the uh, right front uh, real hard. Uh, he's just now getting by uh, Billy Ray Johnson, kind of for 33, going into fourth. So we're going to have to have a number of scratches for him to make the program here tonight. If Sean Becker has ever been shut out of a main event unless he's crashed in a seat. Murray Price knows what he had to do, and he's winning this one. He'll take the white flag right now, one lap to go, and Murray Price will have himself a position in the 360 feature. Running second is Donnie Spoon out of Aberdeen, and he is going to make it tonight. Price comes out of turn number four, and he takes the victory. Rory Price, kind number 39, 12 car, Don Spoon in second, third, 98, Joe Hancock, he'll be the backup, 99, Sean Becker, 
33, Johnson, 93, Francis. Now, let's see what happens. Main event for the sprint cars. Are you ready? And a turn four, green flag. And again, the track has changed quite a bit since these cars have been out there. Let's see how they adjust in the early going. It'll be Mark Ellis taking the early lead. Burrow has a little trouble back in the pack. They straightened it out, traffic heavy. Ellis real high out of four. The same position he ran earlier tonight. And we do get one lap in the history books, 24 to go. Someone is laboring back in the pack. It is Bill Winsley. Winsley has a flat tire, and I hope he doesn't. Well, let's see, they're gonna just point the yellow at him, and he hopefully will get off the track. He's on the apron right now, and he should be able to coast around and get off the racetrack without forcing a yellow. Mark Ellis, your lead car as he comes into turn number three. Mark Ellis, bouncing out of turn number four, he goes. Tommy Wagner, second, Butch Gilbert, third. Then it's Steve Dyer, Denny Smith, Freddie Brownfield, Burrow, Hewan, Edson, and Pennelli. Laps ticking off very, very quickly. We do have an amber. Winsley made it to the infield uh, pit exit way, but parked there. They're not going to leave him sitting there. Five out of turn number three, green flag. Gilbert will, let's see if he gets in there. Oh, I had to back off. Whitener gave him a little tail end action, and Gilbert had to back off, or he might have been on his head. So uh, Ricky Wagner is getting uh, all the moves right, all the right moves, I guess, so to speak. But Gilbert's going to get him this time downstairs. Gilbert goes into second. Not a lot of room, but Gilbert slips by Wagner and goes into second position. So your leader down the back straightaway. Into number three out of turn number four, the bright blue car number 11A. Mark Ellis, Butch Gilbert in second, Tom Wagner, Dyer, Brownfield. As the traffic spins out, we're watching now Bob Burrow has not made any big moves yet. Canelli is having a little troubles back in the pack. It might have to teach where some of the uh, top point leaders are at this stage of the race as we start lap number six. Gilbert goes underneath Ellis in turn number two and takes the lead. Butch Gilbert, a veteran move in turn number two, and Gilbert has the lead. Boy, this could be his night out there right now. Butch Gilbert looks real, real strong. Got a lot of confidence in this car. And Butch Gilbert has the lead right now. Maybe Yellow's cost him last night. We'll see what happens here tonight. Maybe we'll go head to toe. It is Gilbert with the lead. They complete lap number seven. Starting lap number eight, Gilbert the 04 car. It'd be a first, if he can hold on, first win in a couple of years out there. Tom Wagner holding on to second now as he gets by Ellis. Rookie Wagner looking real good. We're gonna have to go yellow. The 7S car, Jerry Paul, has a problem coming out of four. Well, no, the uh, track is staying green. They're just pointing at, uh, is that, that is Jerry Paul. They're just watching. They're letting him uh, stay out there. And I think they're trying to hope that he gets to the infield. Is he going to cut down? He is over there in turn number two, way high. Now he'll have to get a spot to dice down and get into the pit area. And uh, it's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. That's a late yellow. Works. All right, 10 laps down, 15 to go. Green flag out of turn number four. Hectic, oh, look out! Bob Burrow gets upside down, a nasty flip down the front chute. Everybody else gets by. Uh, Steve Dyer's involved. It was up and over a number of cars. Edget Speedway on KBFW. Green flag. And a four they come. Wagner holds on to second with a big move on Ellis. Brownfield slips in the third. Pretty Brownfield goes in the third. He's chasing Wagner, though. Wagner keeping Gilbert in his sight. You see a battle of uh, the rookie and the veteran here soon if Wagner decides. And yes, he does. He puts his nose in there. Let's Mr. Gilbert know that he is there. So a uh, veteran driver from late model wars uh, can see the running of the racetrack and a possible checker. And he's giving veteran Butch Gilbert a lot of uh, battle out there. Butch Gilbert with the lead. Tom Wagner second. Brownfield, Canelli dicing for third right now. Brownfield upstairs, Canelli down low. Brownfield's got his foot into it coming out of four. He won't back off. Brownfield, Canelli still wing to wing. Brownfield is up high. Canelli down low. Brownfield slingshots down the back chute. Still wing to wing. They come. Brownfield and Canelli. Brownfield again has his foot into it. Wagner gets sideways. And up against the fence goes Brownfield. That drops him way back. Wagner, I'm not sure if it's because Wagner got to crooked or what, but uh, Canelli had to back off, or that Brownfield had to back off. Now Canelli closes the gap on Wagner. Canelli downstairs on uh, Tom Wagner. And Canelli goes in this second. Gilbert now into heavy traffic down the back chute. Canelli's got second spot. Here comes Wagner and Canelli. And let's see, one car to the infield is Steve Dyer. Maybe more uh, wrong on that car than what we initially expected. 
Gilbert now has one lap car between himself and Pinelli. Lap 17 showing on the scoreboard. 17 laps in the book. Start lap number 18. Gilbert, Canelli, Wagner, Brownfield, Edson. Your top runners as Dyer makes it to the pits. And the chase is on. Can Canelli catch Butch Gilbert? Down the front straight away they go. Lap number 19 showing on the scoreboard. Canelli and Gilbert. Canelli is trying to throw out the line and reel in. Butch Gilbert, we saw this a few weeks ago. And it was finally a yellow that cost Gilbert. He comes up now on John Ryerson. Lap number 20 showing on the scoreboard. Butch Gilbert with the lead. Only five laps to go. Can he hold on? We've got a car spinning, catching the fence. We go yellow. Well, hold on to your seats. Lap laps away from hey dirt out of four. Green flag. Butch puts his foot into it. Wagner trying to hang tough. Here comes Brownfield. Canelli goes underneath Butch Gilbert, but Gilbert holds on. Down the back straight away he goes. He's got clear sailing, no traffic coming. He's got to put his foot into it and keep the pace fast. Gilbert, now three laps away from victory. Butch Gilbert, Billy Canelli in third spot. Now goes Brownfield. Brownfield in third. Fourth is Wagner. Fifth is Edson. Lap 22 on the scoreboard. They cross the start finish line. Lap 23, two laps to go. Can Butch Gilbert hold on? Here comes Billy Canelli showing himself just underneath the turn number two. It'll be Canelli and Gilbert. It's going to be a photo finish out of turn number four. White flag. One lap to go. Butch Gilbert has been a couple of years for this fine veteran driver from Bo. He will face a slower car down the back straightaway. Bill Winsley. Bill Winsley right in the middle of the groove. Gilbert Dice is low. Here comes Canelli. It's Gilbert with the victory. Billy Canelli second. Fred Brownfield third. Wagner. Edson the 76. Mutton the 42. Rich the 3D. And a Q in the 20. So Butch Gilbert victorious here tonight at the Skagit Speedway, a very, very popular victory. Chewing the fat. All right, out of four, green flag for the three. Well, four cars we have in this economy modified. Ken Eliason is very, very quick in the 06 car. And he will uh, ease the 06 machine around the track. Skeeters, Jensen, and Webb. Webb's still laboring a bit out there from his uh, crash earlier tonight. Ken Lyson was fast when he had the uh, new car when this division started and then had a couple of years off. And so I guess, uh, like his father, knows how to put racing machines together. I'm hoping this is one lap per car because there's not a lot of action out there. And uh, these fans here are looking to see the 360s come up. These guys put on a good show last night where they were strength in numbers. But again, they tore up some last night and uh, tore up some again earlier today. Jerry Carlson, uh, of course, is the point leader, not in the race tonight. Either is second place Paul Struble. So for Jerry Carlson, that's good news because he should be able to well, very easily hold on to the lead. Uh, Jay Barnes is not running the 29 car, so this car starts with zero points. So the only car out there that could gain right now would be the 10 car of Brandon Skeeters, and he has uh, well off the pace, over 110 points behind, and he's no threat to win this one here tonight. So. 29 car, we know it can go fast, but for a rookie driver in this division, uh, run maybe a little too much power in it, because you know Jay Barnes uh, led many laps in that machine. Well, he has got a capable car, but it's a good handling car. Jay Barnes uh, showed, the, showed the winner's circle, and made it to the winner's circle in a lot. So that's half the battle. If you have a car that uh, is a good handler, something that's going to carry around well, it's the, it's the only way to learn. Right? If you learn in a car that uh, you have problems with rolling in uh, just extends the process. Well, Jensen never gets the feel of this machine and uh, comes up on Skeeters now to... A little nervous as a rookie, comes up on a car. It's almost like watching a mechanics race here for a minute. Uh, it's the 29 car, Jensen goes into second. Skeeters, the 10 car, going sour. One lap to go. This is an eight-lap event. Uh, Skeeters brings the white number 10 to the pit area. And a Ken Elias, unless he blows up, is going to win this race. Now, the 10 car Jensen won his heat uh, tonight because uh, all the other cars went sour just before the end. But Ken Elias is going to hold on for the win here tonight. The 06 car, Ken Elias. And another uh, second. All right, traffic lights are out. The field is very much spread out everywhere. They throw the green. The yellow comes back on. Now we got to worry about anybody getting up and over. Yep, that's the way we racers are, right? Out of turn four, green flag. 
Heavy traffic, greasy track. What's going to happen? Early going. Bangmer takes the lead. Eddie Evans has got his foot into it. Had to back off a bit. Bangmer goes high out of four. Evans right on his tail up against the fence. Is the 69 car Perkins. Shana Wolski takes advantage of that, goes into fourth. Perkins gets her back. Here comes Dennis Ari. He takes care of uh, Wilski momentarily there as they go into three. And at turn number four, your leader still Eddie Evans, car number 96. Hectic action out there, the early going here. Heavy traffic, they're thinning out now just a bit. It's still Eddie Evans with the early lead. Remember he led here a few weeks ago. Eddie Evans, blue smoke, a puff of blue smoke coming out of that car in the last circuit. We're on lap number three. And again, the blue smoke coming out of that car down the back chute. Looks like Wes Gibbs has moved into second spot with Bangerman third. In fourth is Army, then Perkins, and Bundy, Raper, Faber, and Wilski. And at number four, coming up on traffic is Eddie Evans. Wes Gibbs right there, knocking on the door now. Well, this would be a dream night if Gibbs could come back. He's had a lot of tough luck this year. Nothing that a win would uh, take care of very, very quickly. Out of four, Gibbs. Very close to the 81 car as he came out of turn number four. Wes Gibbs trying to close the gap on your leader. Eddie Evans down the back straightaway. Six laps into the 360 feature race at Skagit. Howard Lyon way high on that last lap, running a last position. They come up on Darren Smith, who is running very, very low, staying out of the way pretty much, but still uh, something the drivers have to think about and keep an eye on as they circuit this play oval. Evans coming up on Lyon now. They go into turn number one. Evans upstairs on Lyon, down the back straightaway. He gets by Mr. Lyon as he goes into turn number three. Lap number eight, we're on right now. Your leader coming out of turn number four, Eddie Evans. Running a very, very quick pace out there. Wes Gibbs running second. In third position is Bangamer. Then it's Dennis Army, Bundy, Perkins, Raper, Rick Faber, Bill Beaver, Shana Wilski, Elias, and Boyd, Price, Fletcher, Spoon. All right, laps again taking off quickly. Army trying to make it four in a row, but uh, he's going to have a little help here. He's going to need some help. We do have that help right now. Looks, is that Evans over there? Evans involved with a slower car in four. Eddie Evans involved with a slower car, laughing a car over. There. Happens ten down, ten to go. Wes Gibbs will set the pace. Out of turn four, green flag. We've got heavy traffic cars bouncing around, but everybody makes it through. There are some early bumping there, but everybody kept the cars going forward. Wes Gibbs has the lead. Right on his tail is Dennis Army. Army goes upstairs, coming out of turn number four. Army, no room right up against the fence. He keeps his car there. They just minor contact with Gibbs. Army slingshots out of turn number two. Gibbs has the upstairs blocked. Army right up against the fence. Goes into turn number three. They are wing to wing. Gibbs way up high again. Army bouncing in the high stuff. Army sticks his nose in there. There's no room, but Army takes the lead. We've got a spin, though, in turn number four. Well, I don't know. Army... That was a little uh, Lloyd Army style there, Ron. I thought there was not a hole there, but he kept his nose in there. Showing on the scoreboard, looking for 20. Eight laps to go. Green flag. Gibbs will take the lead. Here comes Rod Perkins. Perkins slips into second. Rod Perkins takes the lead in turn number two. Rod Perkins from nowhere. Gibbs gets it back. Three cars all want to win this sprint car race here at Skagit Speedway. Wes Gibbs, Rod Perkins. It's anybody's race out there right now. It is wide open. Gibbs now takes sole possession of first spot back. Perkins goes into second, seems to shake up Dennis Army. Unexpectedly, I think the 69 car poked his nose in there. Army a little out of shape here, trying to get his momentum back. And that may have cost him. Rod Perkins has never won a feature in the Skagit Speedway. And he's six laps away, but he's got to get the lead first. He can taste it. He's right up on Wes Gibbs. Army falls to fourth. Beaver goes into third. Rod Perkins, can he do it? Rod Perkins coming up on Gibbs. The crowd's going wild here at Skagit Speedway. Here comes Rod Perkins out of turn number four. Gibbs goes high. Perkins gives him a little tap on the tail. Yellow flag. We got a car spun in turn number two. It's Gibbs, Perkins, Beavert, Army, and Bundy. Out of four, green flag. What's going to happen here in the final going here? This could be the last restart of the night. It is Gibbs. Beavert slingshots into second spot. Oh, my, this cast is changing. Bill Beavert comes out of nowhere. Army's in fourth. It still gives with the lead. Beavert in second. Rod Perkins. Maybe Perkins wasn't expecting Beavert there now. 
It's wild out there. Perkins in third, Army in fourth. Laps ticking off very quickly. Bill Beaver, of course, a rookie driver. Of course, he has never won a feature at Skagit Speedway. Eddie Evans up against the fence, spinning. Oops, we got a yellow. All right, three laps to go. Gibbs, Perkins, and Beaver out of four. Green flag. Beaver is going to push Gibbs now the rest of the way. Fletcher zims to the infield. Beaver coming up on Gibbs. Beaver up on Gibbs now on the low groove. Gibbs and Beaver. Beaver had to back off a bit. Gets way high out of shape. Here's a chance for Bundy to move in there. It's a scramble for second and third. Fletcher stalls in the low groove. This may force a yellow, and it will. It's going to force a yellow. Fletcher just e uh, inches off the racetrack. Event. Gibbs, Beaver, Bundy are top three. Out of turn four, green flag. Bundy will stay low. Bundy gets Beaver. Bundy gets Beaver on the start. He's looking for Gibbs, but Beaver gets him back in the high groove. Wes Gibbs, here comes Billy Beaver, right on Gibbs' tail. You can't get any closer. Out of turn number four, there is the white flag. One lap to go. Dennis Army's not going to win four in a row unless something changes here very quickly. Beaver slingshots down the back chute. Beaver underneath Gibbs. Beaver take, tries to take the lead. Gibbs slams the door. It's dicing for the final position. Wes Gibbs, Bundy, Beaver, Army, your top four. Wes Gibbs takes the victory. Holy smokes, Wes Gibbs takes the victory in the 11 car, and uh, Gibbs did what he had to do. He had to stay that over tonight, uh, uh, suffering a back injury, and it's kind of taking it easy up there. And Fred, if you're listening, I hope you get back well very, very soon. They miss you down here. At a turn number four, green flag. Again, for these guys, it's been maybe an hour and a half since they've been on the track, so the track has changed a lot. It's been really good, though, Ryan, considering uh, a back-to-back -back race, maybe having overcast skies and wet weather the last couple of days helped rather than three days of baking sun. Scott Coblazer's got the lead, count number 17, and we've got some young guns here in this division as well. Rick Smith running second, Dick Whitty third, and fourth is Ken Flamang as they get by Anderson. Fender banging here as they come out of turn number four. No problem whatsoever. You can do that with the late models. You got fenders that are taking front. You don't know if a wheel car, you got cars up and over because there just is nowhere to put that rubbing out there except up and over a wheel. Scott Glogazer with Rick Smith closing the gap. They go into turn number one, lap number three. Cole Glazer takes the lead downstairs on Smith and turn number two. Smith dices low down the back chute. Cole Glazer there to block that position. Lamang and Herbert, the veteran drivers, working their way through. Herbert's got his foot into it, the low groove down the front straightaway. Mike Herbert, boy, there's five cars running in the one, two, three, four, five position. It is Cole Glazer, Smith, Witte, Herbert, and Flamang. They all bunch very close together coming out of turn number four. Herbert again in the low groove, uh, getting too high as Witte. He drops well back off the pace. Smith upstairs on Cole Glazer. These are the guys decided to put on a show here tonight, too. Smith takes the lead down the back chute. Rick Smith, your new leader on lap number five. Rick Smith, Cole Glazer in second. Again, Herbert in the low groove, has his foot into it, has to back off a bit, finally gets on it again. Herbert takes over second spot, looking for victory number 30. He already leads this division, most wins ever. Going to the infield now is the Todd Van Stroberg machine. He's out of the way now on the uh, muddy grass there right now. Cole Glazer drops to third. It's still Smith with the lead. Rick Smith, Stoberg back on the track. Rick Smith, your leader. Hurlbert in second. In third is Cole Glazer. Ken Flamang's got a hole. Down the front chute. Can't do it. It's Cole Glazer zipped in there. And all this while, they're trying to lap uh, Greg Bishop. Here comes Smith and Hurlbert. Door to door down the back straightaway. Smith still with the lead. Rick Smith coming up on Chris Walters. Out of turn number four, Smith gets high. This could be the spot Herbert needed. Yes, it is. Herbert takes the lead. Has to go high now as he gets by uh, Walters. And Herbert has the lead on lap number nine. Mike Herbert has the lead in the butt light number one. Rick Smith in second. Kenny Flamang in third. Flamang making a move. Gotta like the Scott Cole Glazer hanging top there in fourth in the blue number 17. These guys want to get home early tonight too, it looks like. Rick Smith trying to keep Herbert in his sights. Herbert has two slower cars now to face. Steve Whitty in the 55 and Ken Imthorn in the 78. Herbert has to very carefully dice by these cars. Traffic down the front, shoot! 
contact with the fence is Cole Blazer and Witty. And like now, what is it, five bucks for that age? Out of four, green flag. All right, Kent flying. John Huggins goes to third now. Huggins winning last night. We'll see if he's got something left in that 11 machine. Mike Hurlbert, Ken Flamang, John Huggins, Jimmy Deets. The cream always rises to the top. Here comes Ken Flamang, He's showing himself upstairs, but uh, not to be that lap. Weatherby gets squirrely out of four, but straightens out. Ken Flamang was going to really surprise everybody and make a move there late in the race. Now Hurlbert put some distance between himself and the second place car of uh, Flamang. Huggins and Deets in close quarters as well. Huggins and Dietz uh, getting a little squirrely. This track is probably fairly greasy out there right now, I would imagine. Dietz gets by Huggins and goes into third. A white flag facing Mike Hurlburt out of turn number four. White flag, one lap to go. It'll be victory number 30 for Mike Hurlburt here at the Skagit Speedway. If they can hold on, 15 lap main event, one lap away from completion. Mike Hurlburt all by himself now as he guides his car to turn number three. And takes it easy. Extreme caution there by Hurlburt, but he picks up the win. 15, Ken Flamang. Second, four, Jim Dietz in third. 11, Huggins in fourth. And fifth will be two, Weatherby. Followed by 77, Walters. 25, Anderson. M. Third in the 78. Witte in the 55. And Bishop the 88. So, win number 30 for Mike Hurlburt tonight at the Skagit Speedway, the number one car. <laughs> In the winner's circle with Wes Gibbs tonight. Wes, boy, the way this year's been going for you, you got to feel pretty pleased. Finally, things come together this evening. Yeah, it's been a long, hard road to get here, and I'm just tired of kind of crashing those parts up. <laughs> it wasn't an easy uh, win either. You had uh, Bundy there. You had, uh, you probably didn't know, I don't know, Bob Burrow was in the Beavert machine and traffic everywhere. Dennis Army had to be thinking about Dennis going for four in a row. Everybody was after you. Yeah, I seen Dennis was right in there at right first, and and I just knew he couldn't have it four times in a row. <laughs> <laughs> what the track like? Uh, you made some low moves there late in the race to kind of block the lower groove to keep someone from getting by you, especially in three. Yeah, I, I couldn't get run in the middle of the track without smoking the tires too much. And so to get in the corner fast enough to stay ahead of Bobby, which I didn't even know it was him, mm -hmm. you had to go in real hard. And the only place to stick it was in the bottom. Mm -hmm. What This has been a really a kind of a nightmare year for you. Uh, can you go about it? Uh, when you started the year, obviously you were confident, another year at Skagit. But uh, what, what has been the problem? Anything in particular? Just, I don't know what the, really the problem is. You know, we started out, I think we got a second place there. And then we thought we were selling pretty good. And then we just been in the wrong place at the wrong time. There's a lot of cars going fast, and, and the margin of error is just much slimmer than last year. I was going to say the division is so very, very tough. You had to be pleased. Uh, Scott Berg back here tonight watching for the first time since that night. I'm sure he was pleased up there, too. Yeah, I talked to Ann first thing tonight. She said he was going to be here, and, and they were talking about him up there, and I heard him talk, and I was really happy to hear that he was here. Yeah, well, we were happy to see him. Wes, congratulations. Maybe you'll build on this and uh, get your nose right up to the top for the standings again. Yeah, I hope we can work our way back up. Thanks. All right, thank you, Wes. Career win number three here at Skagit Speedway for Wes Gibbs in the 360 division. In the Spring Car Winner's Circle with Butch Gilbert, our second time talking with you tonight. Butch, uh, boy, another wild one out there tonight, but you came through tonight. I thought maybe when Canelli came up, you might have the hat. what happened a few weeks ago, kind of losing it because of the yellow, but tonight you held on. Yeah, uh, I could hear him back there, but I never did see him, so, you know, uh, and I just decided, well, I'll keep my high groove, and, and if he's going to go around me, he's going to have to do it on the bottom side, and so... <laughs> Which is your usual normal groove, huh? This is true. This is, uh, but uh, we changed gears and decided we'd run the high side to keep the momentum up, you know, because uh, the bottom side sometimes it works great, but uh, if you can go in a little faster, you can come out a little faster. Is it true, someone, this is your first clean sweep and all your years of racing? I would have thought that sometime in your career you would have had a clean sweep, but is it true, your first one? This is true. This is true. I um, got to thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Uh, we used to have time in, so I'd have fast time, uh, heat race, trophy dash, and second in the main or third, you know, but this is the first time in my career that I've had a clean sweep. And 29 plus years? Uh, somewhere in there. Somewhere in there, yeah. <laughs> uh, we, 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 we can fudge a bit. Uh, we have, talking about the veterans you had, of course, yourself a veteran, Billy Canelli, one of the young veterans. Uh, of course, he's been around with a couple of championships before you won your three in a row. But you got to be pleased that it is such a talented group of drivers that you can race with and run the wing to wing and uh, wheel to wheel without too much worry. I mean, this is true. You know, uh, myself, I've learned to watch and read the other drivers and, and know basically what they're going to do. And so 
I, I'll give an inch to gain a mile, so to speak, or whatever. And so, um, and it's helped over the years. And I think this is career win number 13, at least in the sprint division, since the sprint started in 78. So you're up there, I think the top five or six, and a lucky 13 tonight. Lucky 13. That 13's been plaguing me ever since. Uh, it's been the, a couple of two years or just one year? Uh, I think 88 was the, the first last time. The last time I, you know, but uh, 13 for the, 13's been a number this season that has popped up a lot. Really? Oh, yeah. Last night to 13 on the restart and bus in Portland at the swap meet. 13, I wouldn't get on. Not superstitious, I understand. Just to <laughs> knock on wood. Knock on wood. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, that's we'll get by it. And <laughs> well, Butch, always a pleasure watching your race. All the best luck the rest of the year. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Butch Gilbert winning tonight in the sprint division here at the Skagit Speedway. In the late model winner circle with Mike Hilbert. Mike, win number 30 tonight in your racing career and number one now by two over uh, Pete Harding. Uh, still feels good, doesn't it? Yeah, that's a comfort zone. Uh, I imagine there's someone in another division. Bobby Burrow's probably coming up a little bit there. And, uh, 24. Yeah, well, we'll keep trying all we can to pad <laughs> that and hope it takes him a while. Tell me again the year you started, because we're talking tonight on the radio side that it seems to be so quick that you came up uh, from zero to uh, your 30. Actually, it wasn't that quick, 10 years. It was 1980, summer, let's see, July of 1980 when we first started, so it's actually been quite a while. Yeah, well, still pretty quick. Tonight, uh, you had uh, actually a pretty good battle early. Scott Coldlazer showing some stuff there in the 17 car, and of course, always Ken Flamang's there knocking on the door. Yeah, Kenny... Uh, Looked good, and Ricky Smith was real good there uh, for quite a few laps. In fact, I had a heck of a time working around him. And uh, then after we were going to have a restart, he's right behind me and apparently overheated, so mm -hmm. took away his chances. You guys came out of there like uh, gangbusters. I think the first 12, 13 laps with no uh, no ambers looked good. Yeah, yeah, that's good clean racing, really close. I know <laughs> there's a couple times there we were doing a little rubbing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess change paint. It makes it more colorful in the racing yeah. game. Mike, uh, 30 wins. Uh, I want to ask you to pick out one of them because I know they're all good to win, but uh, you keep setting yourself goals. It seems to me you're, as you accomplish this, the three championships going for four, it never gets boring. No, it doesn't get boring. Uh, <clears throat> actually, the goals are all achieved, so right. now you just, like I said, try to put and a cushion on everything down. you're yeah. doing, and, and then we, of course, plan to go asphalt. Nothing against Skagit. We love it here. In fact, we hope to do this part-time even when we do asphalt. So. Uh, there's there's no real goals. Uh, someone's going to catch me on that record. I, I, I really got a feeling Bobby Burroughs. Mm -hmm. Well, at least you can keep the late model record nonetheless. Mike, always a pleasure talking with you. All the best of luck. Win number 30 and maybe 31 uh, seven days from now. Six days, maybe. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Chet. All right. Mike Hilbert winning tonight his career victory number 30 at the Skagit Speedway.